Hi guys, welcome to the competition preparation uh, masterclass. My name is Matt DeQuina, I'm a 2008 Beijing Judo Olympian, multiple Australian and uh, Oceania champion. Uh, pretty much, in case you don't know me, uh, I spent 11 years travelling the world trying to qualify for the Beijing and the London Olympics. I made the Beijing Olympics but I missed out on the uh, London Olympics by the littlest bit and I've done uh, tons and tons of competitions. So I started Judo at 5 years old. Uh, and uh, and I was in competitions by six years old, and we used to do competitions week after uh, month after month for years on end. So by the time I hit twelve years old, I'd done hundreds of competitions already. Maybe not hundreds, but a lot of competitions. And so now, uh, couple that with uh, eleven years international travel, uh, training and competing, and and that sort of stuff. Uh, even competing once I've retired from judo and Brazilian jiu jitsu competitions and stuff, and wrestling and that. Um, I've just done hundreds and hundreds of competitions and over the years I've learned stuff. I'm still tweaking today on how to uh, prep better and that sort of stuff, but I thought I'd do a, a competition preparation masterclass for you guys so you can learn about what I do to prepare for the biggest tournaments in the world for what I did in, uh, what, when I competed. Um, but I'm constantly tweaking and finding things that work and you might watch this masterclass and learn 50 things for you to do or you might you might learn three things, or maybe we do things a little bit differently, and that's actually okay. We're all different. It's not. I'm not a cookie cutter preparation for all. It's it's finding what fits best for you. And this masterclass is hopefully going to cover things that you may not have thought about. That will actually help you be in the best mindset and the best physical preparation and 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 space for you to compete in a competition. Um, and the first thing I want to talk about is. Um, I'm not a world champion, I don't know everything, this is just my experience over the hundreds and hundreds of competitions I've done throughout the years, okay, and talking to people and, and using it all my, and myself. The first thing I want to say is you get good at competitions by doing competitions. The more competitions you do, the better you get. If you compete once a year, you might be good, but you're not going to be good at competitions. The more you compete, the better you get. And why? You get good because um, you you would have, to, to compete in the comp, you would have trained hard. You would have dieted. You would have cut weight. You would have warmed up. You would have weighed in. You would have warmed up. You would have had a fight. You would have won it or lost it. Okay, so all those experiences put together help you get better at competition. One of my good friends of mine is a judo player, does jiu-jitsu and MMA, and he tells people, compete. The more you compete, the better you get. And I say the same, the more you compete, the better you get. And this guy in particular, technically he's not that good, he wins all the time. Why? He's always in the arena of competition. If you're not in the arena of competition, then you need to get into the arena of competition more often so it becomes more normal. The nerves become normal, the cutting weight becomes normal. And when it becomes normal, it becomes easier, it becomes second nature, and then you can focus on winning more and more. So um, the more you compete, the better you get. Do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competitions and wrestling competitions and judo competitions and freestyle judo competitions and Kodokan competitions and do whatever tournaments that you can. If you lose, you're going to learn stuff. You either win or you, you lose or you learn. You know, you're always a learning if you allow yourself to learn, okay? And I'll talk about that a little bit later on. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is competition specific training okay so if you want to compete then you need to do competition um, specific training for example if I want to enter an MMA competition there's no point just doing judo or just doing BJJ and not focusing on striking because if I, that's the sport the sport of MMA is striking so if I only do grappling well I'm not going to be best prepped for it I want to be doing striking arts to get good at it maybe you're a competition judo player or a jiu jitsu player and people say to me all the time um, oh, hey, Matt, uh, we've got our competition class. And I'll go, cool, what's the competition about it? Oh, yeah, we spar hard. We do a lot of randori. We, we roll really hard. Okay, cool, so you just train judo. Competition classes need to have competition rules. There needs to be a referee to referee your match, to give you scores. There has to be something at stake. So we need to make competition training as close to competition as possible. Now we'll never get it as close to competition because of medals are at stake and, and, and money can be at stake and points on a points table to get funding is at stake. You can't replicate those things in training. But there was a guy I met years and years ago, let me just explain it, years and years ago at the Australian Institute of Sport and he did his, he was doing his PhD on trying to close the gap between competition 
and training. Trying to close the gap between training and competition so that we can get good at training and then it can follow over into competition. And uh, when he came to one of our national training uh, sessions, um, he said, um, we did, we're doing five by, uh, 10 by 5 minutes tachiwaza and 8 by 5 minutes newaza, for example. And 8 rounds of 5 minutes on the ground. And he said, this is not really judo. This is, this is not really competition judo, this 5 minutes of fighting on the ground. This never happens in competition. I said, yeah, I know. He goes, then why are you doing it? If, it's not, if you don't do this in competition, then why are you doing five minutes on the ground? And, and it makes sense. It's not specific to the sport at all. At a national training camp, you should be doing 20 to 30 seconds on the ground or now as a transitions or something specific to the sport in order to get good at the sport. We all know Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys that are phenomenal on the ground, but they can't submit you in 30 seconds in a judo match. Why? Because they're specifically good at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competitions where it's five to 10 minutes on the ground but maybe not so much in judo where it's 30 seconds on the ground. So it's not specific to the sport. If you want to get good at judo, you need to be specific to the sport. If you want to get good at Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you need to get specific to the sport. Yes, there's carryover and crossover, but let me keep explaining. So this guy, um, his PhD was on long jump, and he said he went to long jump and he watched um, uh, the long jumpers jumping. And they would run down and jump into the sand pit, they would come out and they'd run and jump, run and jump, run and jump. But you see, then you're watching competition, and in competition, um, they ran and jumped. And at the board where they jumped, there was a, two yellow cones. At the beginning of the run, there was two yellow cones. Halfway down the run, there was two white cones. At the board, there was two white cones and a referee. And when they jumped, after they got out of the sandpit, someone raked over the sandpit. And he said, why don't you do that in training? all that stuff, have the cones, have the referee, have someone raking the pit. They said, oh, what's the point? Like, it doesn't really matter. And he's PhD, and I'm trying to find the study and, and reference it. I can't remember the guy's name, but the, it stuck with me. And what, it, what he was getting at is it's not specific. You know, this guy's PhD, pretty much, they uh, put all those things in place in training, and within six months, all the guys were jumping way further than before. Um, like dramatically further, in competition further. Why? It could have been to do with the training. It could have been that they were, and he reckons, it was because they were doing, making it as close scenario as possible. Okay, so if you want to get good at judo competitions, you need to do competitions. You need to have competition-specific training, which means having referees, giving scores, getting first score wins in competitions, or you're, you're down by Wazari, you've got 30 seconds to get it back, and Playing tactic, playing the red, push people out when they, if they step out, give them a penalty. You know, start putting things on the line in training, but make it uh, give out penalties in training. Make someone do, if they have a one side group for too long, they've got to do 30 burpees or 50 burpees or make it punishable so they don't do it in training and they won't carry across into competition. So the first one is to be specific. The second one is, um, and I learned this from, a, I can't remember the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guy, he's a, a black belt, he's a lightweight. He said for a long time in training, he was a lightweight fighter and he loved fighting big guys. He goes, I want to fight all the big guys. Um, but he found over time, he fought all the big guys who were far, they were strong and big, but they were slow. Then he went in competition versus lightweights and they're like, they're really, really fast. And he's like, man, I've got to stop fighting the big guys and only fight, fight the little guys. Because in competition, I'm only fighting little and fast guys. I'm not fighting 100 kilo, slow moving people. I'm fighting fast people. And so the second thing is, if you're fighting fast judo players, or if you're a heavyweight and you're only fighting lightweights, well, it's not really specific. Um, so if you can, try to fight guys around your weight all the time. Now, on the flip side, I know at training, it can be tough. There's 20 on the mat, there's 10 heavyweights, there's 10 middleweights, there's 10 lightweights, or there's 30 on the mat. Um, and you've got to swap and change. But the closer you get to comp, try to really fight guys that are your weight and that move like in your weight division. So the first one is you get good at competition by competing. You get good at competition by being specific training and competition by fighting people that are specific to who you're fighting and also rules, super important. But if you just go and do randori or sparring hard, that's not specific training, that's just sparring hard. If you do five minutes of groundwork, um, that's not really a sport of judo. It's the art of judo, but not the sport. And so you've got to weigh up those options as well. Okay, so 
And there's just my intro into how to get good um, at competition judo or competition jiu-jitsu, whatever it may be. Um, super important to know that and that will help you shape what you do. You can even say training. Um, uh, hey, man, uh, let's fight and we'll give penalties to each other. We ask, the, ask someone else to give penalties and whoever, if you get penalised out, you got to do 50 burpees or give the other person 10 bucks, whatever it is to make you fight, have a bit of odds on the line to help you become more specific.